Howdy guys, thought I'd do a video here on a revolver changing out the springs on it, but first of all I want to mention that not everything that has a trigger is a gun. Some things actually uh, beat out guns when it comes to triggers. Case in point, this uh, this glass I got here, this uh, this beer mug. Um, show what I mean, I'm going to fill here, fill it up here. Alright, just partially. Alright, so I got a trigger here, I got a glass of beer, let's say it had no head on it. Pull the trigger. Look at that. <laughs> Instant beer head. Isn't that neat? I guess the way it works, uh, you got your trigger and you got the, um, your power transfer here to a firing pin that's got a rubber stopper on the end of it, a rubber uh, plunger. And it looks like it smacks the bottom of this glass and there's a lot of ridges here. There's like, uh, I guess, uh, some sort of a cylinder with ridges on it. And that cylinder will um, get smacked by this firing pin and release a lot of the bubbles and you get your instant uh, head of foam. It's neat. Anyway, it's made by a jockey out of uh, out of Japan, I guess, and I was able to find uh, some folks out in Hong Kong who are uh, selling them uh, for a decent price. So I just got it recently. Kind of like it. I don't always advocate uh, drinking alcohol and messing around with guns. Just wanted to show that little trigger uh, assembly there. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the Rhino, you know, how uh, you got the trigger uh, transferring to a lower um, firing pin setup. Anyway, kudos to anyone who's ever had Tusker, one of my favorite beers. Uh, it's quite tasty. And now let's take a look at this gun here. This is actually a, a friend of mine's gun. Uh, she wanted to get a gun. She thought it was the right time to start investing in a firearm because I guess things away in the economy, uh, politically, whatever, they're not going the way she... Uh, she thinks they should be going. I tend to agree with her. And it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And uh, she had a couple of requirements. First of all, that it be a revolver. I think you'll find that uh, most women tend to like revolvers and most guys like semi-automatics. Uh, me, I like revolvers for the aesthetics. Uh, I also like semi-automatics and uh, heck, I like all guns. <laughs> But uh, she wanted a revolver. She wants something without too much recoil. So we, uh, we're looking at a 22 Magnum here. Uh, you might have heard of 22 WMR Winchester Magnum Rimfire. It's bigger than your 22 long rifle. And um, if you ever fired one, you'll notice that it's got a lot of flash bang. It's a neat gun. And what kind of like prompted me on this was uh, that show Swamp People. I don't know if you've ever seen this. It's about people that go and har harvest alligators out of the swamps and sell them. And in the one episode, um, that gal Elizabeth, she used to work for a uh, Troy, you know, she'd always be like, Shoot him! Shoot him, Elizabeth! Uh, she was out on her own, and she was wading into some water to retrieve an alligator. And she said that she wouldn't try it without her trusty 22 Magnum revolver. And I'm pretty sure, uh, after freeze framing that video enough times, that is a Taurus, but it's probably the Hunter model of this gun, so it had like another uh, inch or two inches on it. So let's see, uh, my friend, she wanted a revolver. She wanted it without too much recoil. It's 22 Magnum here. She wanted it for a decent price. That's why we're going with Taurus here instead of a Smith & Wesson. I mean, I um, I, I've had some Tauruses before. I had a Taurus 1911. Uh, I think it's the model PT 1911. And you could actually tell the difference of quality between that and, like, a, say, a Kimber, for instance. Not that the Taurus had anything really wrong with it. Um, it never failed to fire. It, uh, it had a lot of the, the features you'd pay extra to get on your Kimber, and uh, it was about half the price. But um, uh, whenever I'd be at the range and be firing my Taurus, my brother would come up behind me because the gun was made in Brazil. He'd go, Ole! each time I fired it. But uh, the NRA says that the iron forges out in Brazil are as good as anything we got out here in the States. Uh, they gave him the thumbs up, so a lot of folks are uh, liking the Taurus. I know a bunch of people on the um, gun boards I hang out on, like for instance a Virginia gun trader, they um they swear by their PT 1911s. I'm not much of a 1911 guy, but uh, I got a couple of them. Anyway, here we go. So cheap gun, uh, or less expensive than a Smith and Wesson, um, a revolver, uh, low recoil, and I kind of like this. It's got eight shots. It's got adjustable uh, rear sights. This is the model uh, 941, by the way. There's also a model 94, which I believe shoots the 22 long rifle. The problem with this is the hammer spring. This being a rimfire uh, revolver, it's shooting 22 magnum uh, rimfire. It needs a heavy spring 
to crimp that rim fire. All right. Uh, I actually have one of those um, trigger uh, gauges, and uh, trying it on this one in double action, uh, I went off the meter. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably around 15 or more pounds. Um, and if a day shooting, even just a single action, you're going to start getting a blister pulling this hammer back. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap out the spring. Now you could go uh, with a company like Wolf um, and look for like a nine pound spring. Uh, this is what we call the hammer spring in here. You'll see it in a second. Um, and I did try that, but I had a couple failure to fires. And a lot of people swear online about getting a uh, an 11 pound spring. I think, as I said, the one in here is 14 pounds combined with everything. Maybe uh, we're looking at 15, 16 pounds of pull. And uh, for a small frame revolver, Wolf didn't have the, the 11 pound spring, but I noticed that the uh, the size spring would be for a Taurus revolvers of uh, the Model 73, 85, or 605. So I gave a ring up to Taurus. I uh, told them I was refinishing a uh, Model 85, and could I please get an 11 pound spring? So I just got in the mail. I ordered three of them, buck a piece plus shipping, which was uh, another three or four bucks. And uh, I got three just in case I had to clip down the um, the coils to fit. But uh, you'll see in a second that they look to be about the right size. So let's start getting ready. Got our screwdriver set. We might need some pin punches. Definitely need our needle nose pliers in this case. And uh, here we go. I always like to have these little tiny tubs around for when I'm taking things apart. Alright, so we checked already when we uh, opened up the cylinder that it was unloaded. And uh, I always like to find a screwdriver bit that fits well because I hate when the, when the screws get marred on, on my guns. I think that looks bad. It looks tacky. So try to get one that fits as well as possible. Alright, so screw holding the grips together. They just come apart in halves. There you go. And here you go. You can already see the um, the main spring. Sometimes they call that the main spring or the hammer spring. Um, I'm not a gunsmith, but uh, uh, I do enjoy taking things apart, <laughs> and then I like even more the uh, the frantic, uh, you know, craziness of trying to get it back together again. Uh, it's good if you can uh, videotape yourself doing this. That way, you know where things go. And if it's your first time, uh, there are some springs in here that can fly out. Uh, you know, do it inside a cardboard box or a garbage bag so that you can capture your stuff. I already had some springs go crazy on this one, and. Um, I had to search all over the floor for them. I found them in the detents, but oh well. Alright, this plate here is held in place by these three screws. This screw actually also has a detent that holds or locks in the crane for your cylinder. So, let's take those out. Dun, da, 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 da. Alright, like I said, this last screw here has a detent you want to be careful that you don't lose that. And I think on some on some smithies, that detent might be spring loaded, um, and it is in this case too on on your uh, on the torus. So careful with that. All right, at this point we can pry off our little cover plate. Beep. And you can see the internal workings of your your revolver. In fact, if here if we want to try it, we can pull back the hammer. You'll notice uh, kind of how it works right now. Here's the uh, the compressed mainspring ready to return the uh, the striker hammer. Here's that energy transfer plate. That's a safety feature that'll move in to uh, transfer energy from the hammer to the firing pin, which is actually the spring-loaded little uh, ball here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's let's grab one of these guys here. Point things out. All right. So right here, you see that little ball. This uh. This energy transfer bar, I guess, moves up to the tran to over the ball, allowing this part of the hammer here to strike it, and to press the ball, and crimp your rim fire. So this actually here, this lip is not part of the um, that is not actually the striker. That'll hit the top plate. If this energy transfer bar is not here, that means you won't actually crimp anything, and that way you won't have a uh, a misfire or something. You won't have the gun go off accidentally. Uh, you can see a lot of different parts in this already. Uh, you can kind of see the universal direction uh, or uh, the one direction uh, a device here and on the hammer. We'll take that part. We also have the um, the cylinder advance. All these things are spring-loaded, so you want to be careful. All right, so let's get out that 
mainspring, before you can actually take things out, you have to get rid of the mainspring. We could actually get the cylinder out at this point. So, move that forward, and this crane slides out. Now you want to be careful because right here, that's spring loader. That, that little plunger here, that's part of the crane, it kind of pushes against this little, uh, this little cog here, which will lift this lug into place. And that lug, I don't know, let's see if we can get that uh, to pop up a tiny bit. You can kind of see it already. There's that lug. That's the lug that locks into place on your cylinder and keeps it from rotating when you're ready to fire. It's kind of a, a safety device. All right. And now you'll notice that the gun's actually locked up uh, because you'll notice that there's a spring-loaded heavy pin here. You can see that on the cylinder. See that? That pin actually pushes against this uh, recess over here and it'll move back this uh, the safety bar, I guess we'll call it. And I'm actuating that actually by uh, moving the cylinder release. And that frees up the gun so you can move it again at this point. All right. So in the few, in later on in the video, if uh, we have to move parts of the gun, in order to do that, we're actually going to be pulling back on the cylinder release. But first, let's get out that mainspring. We we'll use our needle nose pliers for that, and I'm going to grab this uh, the mainspring bar, and I'm going to depress it back, pull it back, so that I can get this little bar out of the way and free it from the uh, the hammer assembly. Okay. So that came out easy, and there's this little tiny plate that it rests against. Don't lose that, that's really important. Um, here's the hammer um, spring, or the main spring. Uh, and the little bar it uh, pushes against, that's what we're going to change out. Now, I guess I'll show you also the, uh, the trigger reset spring, since you can change that. I kind of like what they have already in place, so I'm not really going to mess around with it. But let's go and just take it out. Uh, can, it's easiest if you um, remove it along with... You'll see how this is. There's a part that's being held in, in in place. It's this little tiny like housing for it that you can just lift out of that little hole. So I'm using a, a pin punch. I think it's five thirty seconds. Nope, uh, it's uh, an eighth of an inch pin punch. Um, just to fit in this recess, depress the spring a bit as I lift up straight. There we go. So that little housing comes out. The spring comes out, and uh, here's also the little bar that it rides against. All right, so at this point we could uh, further remove different parts of the gun, um, and in order to do that, once again, we have to pull back the cylinder release, and that frees up the gun. You can kind of see how the, the movement of everything works at this point. So, the, for the single and double action, that's kind of neat. So by going uh, at a half cock measure. You can now lift out your hammer group, and this little tiny, uh, that little uh, one-directional uh, device, it actually can come out. You can uh, depress the spring and t swivel it out. I don't want to do that. That spring is tiny, and getting it back in there, uh, it's a bit of a fiddle-faddle. Now, I might be, uh, think about like shaving this, or not shaving, but uh, filing it a bit to smooth it out, just so that this surface definitely makes contact with that energy transfer bar. Now, at this point, you could also remove out your trigger assembly. Uh, your cylinder release is spring-loaded. See that? I'm not going to do it because, let's see if we can see it here. Um, right here, I'm pointing at... There, you see that little... Uh, that's a detent that's under a heavy spring. Um, and that will fly out like crazy and it's hard to, to reassemble everything. Uh, I mean, it's not impossible, it's just you, know, you have to fiddle with things. So all you do is you push this out and lift straight up. And when you do that, the detent will fly out, and you make sure you catch it. And then you'll take out your cylinder advancer, you can take out your trigger, you'll take out your energy transfer bar, and the, the gun's pretty much freed so you can polish parts uh, or grease things as necessary. But uh, since mainly we're talking about changing out the springs, that's what we'll take care of right now. So let's get that hammer back in place. I'm going to half cock the uh, trigger again. Drop the hammer in again. And this will it'll eventually find its, its proper way, but... Um, um, it's easiest to fit that way uh, by going half cocked. All right. Now this will take a couple tries <laughs> getting this spring back on. It's a hassle. You'll notice on this little housing, um, one side definitely has a, a lip in it to hold the spring, and the other side is kind of smooth. Um, 
So sometimes you can do it by hand, sometimes uh, it helps to be pushing the whole thing with a pin punch. The trick is to get this little tiny ball joint into um, the lip on this trigger. Uh, you don't want it actually fitting underneath like that um, because if, if that happens you'll just like bend metal or you'll scratch metal or whatever. So it has to fit into that little tiny lip. You can press the spring and drop that little housing piece into the hole. All right, cool. We didn't need a we didn't need a pin punch to push against that, so that worked out okay for us. And you'll see it's important uh, later on when we uh, when we uh, we test the gun's functionality that um, the spring rests on the on the lip. And you can kind of see the little ball joint where it's it's lying on that spring where it's hitting that lip. All right, now we're going to put back on uh, the new main spring. And don't forget, it, it's a good idea to have things nicely greased in here um, for functionality. That was one of the problems with this, this Taurus, is when we got it, uh, there was a lot of dried caked Cosmoline in here. I think this was new old stock. And uh, it had to have a, a proper cleaning, so I took it apart and took a look at it. Alright, this, this actually helps, I think, if you put the reverse uh, grip on. And that's because it'll hold this plate a bit as you try to line things up. Okay. And let's see if we can angle things a little bit better in our favor. So, I mean, it's not difficult doing all this. It's just a matter of, you know, balancing out everything to get it all to work. Now, the uh, this, uh, this mainspring uh, guide rod, you want it so that the little um, hump sticks out towards the rear revolver. If you don't, if it's pointing down, it's going to ride against that little tiny um, housing for the other spring and uh, your gun won't be fully uh, able to cock itself. Alright, so we're going to grab our needle nose pliers again. I'm going to push this against that black plate. Hopefully the black plate doesn't flip out on us. That happens quite a lot. Oops. Derp. Compressing it enough to get it there. So the little ball fits into this little tiny um, recess here. Cool. So we can actually test for functionality. Once again, pull back on cylinder release spring. Cock your gun. You'll see that this little um, housing allowed that rod for the spring guide to pass right through. Release. So we got it working again. All right, let's drop that cylinder in. Uh, right here we go. And once again, remember it's under a little bit of a spring, so you have to push it back a bit before you snap it in place. Push it back. There we go. Okay. Now we'll put on this little side plate. Let's start popping our spring, our um, our screws back in. still in place on that one, yep. And it's kind of neat, that way you can uh, you can remove your cylinder for a better cleaning because you'll get a little bit of char on the outside of that and it's easier to scrub it when it's outside of the actual frame of your revolver. Last piece. So far, so good. Everything just finger tight, you know. You don't want to strip those screws. You don't want to do anything you shouldn't. All right, gun looks good. Let's ch check the functionality. All right. Locks back in place. Wow, that's a lot softer. That is a lot softer. Of course, before I give it back to her, I'm going to take it out to the range, give it a test run, make sure there's no failure to fires. As I said, I tried it with the 9-pound uh, spring. Didn't work. 
had to wait for Tor to send out some 11 pound springs. We'll give it a try. Um, if it doesn't work, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go inside. I'll polish up, polish up some of the uh, the parts to make sure that uh, we have proper movement. Um, that works too. Fantastic. Uh, and your double action. So I think this is good to go. I'm gonna post a video and um, maybe I'll add some comments later on to see whether or not it works. As I said, uh, shooting this thing with the original spring, not very fun. Um, in fact, uh, it was impossible to use up the entire hour of the range doing that. But uh, this, this looks like it'll, uh, it'll work out. Cool. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to enjoy your uh, little jockey uh, mugs if you can find them. Uh, that's J-O-K-K-I. A um, bit of a novelty. Ah, and a bit of a reward there for me. Uh, and uh, Alright, take it easy, folks.